All right, man. So before we get into some hockey talk, uh, everything's revolving around Spider-Man right now. And I can confirm that you and I are not in it. <sighs> Got me. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Shaggy Von Doom himself, Mr. Kyle Sullivan, is in the house. And on today's episode, we will be discussing this next game, which they're saying right now is being played, but it's something that we need to watch because COVID seems to be running wild in the NHL, especially with... Uh, the Nashville Predators. So we will talk about that. We'll talk about the division right now. Avalanche, uh, obviously, on a, a five-game winning streak. What that has done for them in terms of the standings, and kind of just go over the, the the division and where things stand. And it's exactly a tightly contested division like you would expect, with the exception of, obviously, the Coyotes. But we'll talk about that. And we will also go over... I know we're only mid-December, but the Avalanche have played against uh, several Eastern Conference teams that you could throw a dart at and say they're, they they could be in the Stanley Cup final. How the Avalanche have fared against those teams, and if the Avalanche were lucky enough to make the Cup final and were to go up against one of those teams, ones that they've already played, how would we feel about those matchups based on how they've gone so far in the regular season. So we'll get into all that stuff and wherever else it takes us. But first things first, follow the show on social media outlets, LOP and underscore avalanche on Twitter, locked on avalanche on Instagram questions, comments, concerns, opinions to locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow the show's YouTube channel and subscribe to it over on the YouTube and hello to everybody over there. <laughs> all right, sir. So avalanche, you know, uh, five game winning streak, Big game, obviously a division game. And like I said, we'll get through the division in full uh, next segment. But it's I, – I was thinking it would be up in the air, but you t you hear things coming from the league and they're, they're not saying things like, well, we're monitoring the situation. I'm sure obviously that they are. But they've not alluded at all that I've seen to say like the game is, is in question. They're basically saying – as of right now, as of us recording this, that game is a go. Is it because, you know, it, it, it's a day off in between and why jump the gun? Let's get all the information and then make the call on the day of the game. Or is it not that serious? It's it's 12 total people on the Predators, six staff members and six players. Uh, wh wh what's... Why are we we are where we are right now with this, and they haven't just called it? Because I honestly feel like um, this was something they talked about in the Monday Night Football game. Um, there were thirty-seven confirmed positive tests in the NFL, and that was just a passing note in an NFL game. Um, I I think it's one of those things that hockey fans are so worried that the season's getting shut down again and the NFL is handling it just like so nonchalant. If there was more um, concern out of the NFL about how to address that, I think the NFL would, I mean, the NHL would be following suit. And I think, yeah. I think we are trying not to jump the gun, which honestly, this situation, like the NHL, I feel like this is something that we should address. Like, we should honestly just pull the plug on going to the Olympics and take a break now all the way through Christmas, at least until the first of the year, push all those games into that empty February problem solved. Uh, well, I mean, that is a little bit of a problem because that's tough to, to schedule. I would think, I would think because uh, you know, those, dates probably have already been soaked up by other things going on in those arenas, True. Uh, you know, concerts and, um, 
obviously basketball games and and whatever whatever I, you know those arenas saw that well, we have all this time to fill they probably filled them so i i think that's why you you'll get if there is a, an opening and it can happen maybe you, it gets slotted in there but it can't i mean let me just get to the calendar uh for february i mean okay so you can't just say like smack dab in the middle of Feb- February randomly on like February 16th, you guys are going to play a game that day <laughs> after you haven't played for two weeks. And then you're just going to go do a makeup game. Who knows where, like there's a lot of logistics that need to get uh, sorted out where I don't think the NHL really wants to do that. I think they've committed to, we're just, we're, you know, whether or not we go to, to the Olympics, February is, is, is done and off limits. We'll figure out how to, Uh, make up these games. But um, yeah, I mean, this is going beyond, I mean, we're talking about the Predators game because that's the next game for the Avalanche, but I mean, look what's going on in Calgary, obviously. Uh, The, the Hurricanes had one game postponed, I believe. And then, and then they're playing, I think as we're recording this, they, they, they were back on. And that's what we don't know about the Predators. And I think that's another reason why they're not calling this thing right now. Because what were those six players? Why were they put in the COVID protocol? Was it just because they felt symptoms and now you have to test them? And then if that comes back negative, they're out of the protocol. Mm-hmm. So, um, you, you know, you're not going to jump the gun on a day off and and make that call. So, yeah, from from where we're standing, let's hope that the game goes on as scheduled. Uh, if not, okay, then that's, that's, you know, just the reality of the situation. And this is not going to be the last time the avalanche get involved with something COVID related when it comes to if a game is going to be played or not, this is going to be the reality of, of watching sports uh, for this season. And who knows for how many other seasons. And this is, I'm Speaking on the standpoint and the mentality of being a fan entrenched in the game, like this is a division game, two very hot teams in the division. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't want this this new COVID outbreak to start shutting teams down to where they have 16, 17, maybe even 15 players available to dress. And when it comes to the end of the season, however it shapes up, if we even reach the 82, that this game with – COVID depleted teams is a deciding factor on either where teams finish up. If you're in or out, like it's starting to ruin the legitimacy of the Stanley cup, which is the most pure playoff system in professional sports. So Hmm. I, in, in the, I don't know, I guess like just preserving the game. I just don't want it to come down to that. But we are also Avalanche fans, and we're used to new faces every single night in the lineup and established faces not being there. So we're kind of used to it, but it's one of those situations. Like, if we beat Nashville tonight, this is a fantastic opportunity to move up and keep this hot streak going. But if it's canceled, it's a good way to end it real quick. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right now it's a go, and, you know, it, it they got six guys, players anyway, staff, six staff. They, you know, if, if there's no further players that get added to the list and say even like half of those players, even three of those players, you know, just had symptoms and they tested negative and they're removed from it. I didn't think this game is, is good to go. Um, if it's, you know, if it's all six remain on there, I don't know how you, how you play that game. Yeah, but, uh, we, we, we shall see. All right, and then we're going to talk about this division uh, after we hear from Stat Hero. And who else we got? We got Stat Hero and Stance. Ooh, yeah, I got some good stuff to talk about, Stance. So uh, also, I, I sent you a text message. Check check your text message really quick while, while I'm reading these, these ad reads. Um, all right, so Stat Hero. No one plays daily fantasy sports to lose. Winning feels so much better, but traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against. Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it is you versus the house in a head-to-head fantasy matchup, and it's winner take all. 
Here is the crazy part. Stat Hero shows you their lineups before you play, and you handpick the team you want to face them one-on-one. This never-before-seen innovation of a fantasy sports and, and sports betting hybrid has Stat Hero players clocking odds that are over four times better. Why? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns. Stat Hero puts you in control of your fate. And with Stat Hero, as you are in control of the stakes, you decide how much you're going to play and for. And Stat Hero has no choice but to take it because they're daring you to beat them. Stat Hero's head to head is what daily fantasy sports should be one on one. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash hockey and use the promo code hockey for a 100% deposit match at a stathero.com slash hockey with the promo code hockey. Once again, that is a 100% match. Terms and conditions do apply. Also, Stance. Stance, one of our newer sponsors. And yes, I did get a nice little care package from Stance uh, today. Got some socks and got some boxer briefs. And I have not worn any of them yet, but just the feel of them Top of the line stuff. I'm telling you, it's they they are uh, they're looking good, and they're founded in 2009, and it's an apparel apparel company which is radically reinvented socks, underwear, and active apparel with a sharp focus on comfort, quality, and creativity. Stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in, that those who feel good do good. Go see for yourself, register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off of your first purchase. Just at checkout, use the promo code locked on. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. All right, sir. Want to talk some division? Absolutely. There we go. Um, let's, uh, by the way, much better. <laughs> I think we had to change a setting for you, did we not? Yes, we did. Uh, microphone yeah. popped out, but we're good to go now. Think we are, we're, we're all better. So, all right, let's talk some division because the Avalanche are uh, ascending upwards in that uh, division. So I want to bring it up here. And they are still... With games in hand, them and Dallas have played the least amount of games in the division with 26 games, uh, games played total. So right now, Minnesota still has a lead, but that lead has dwindled. They have 39 points overall. They are losers of two in a row. And St. Louis is now two points behind them, although Minnesota does have one game in hand against St. Louis. But St. Louis has 37 points. The Avs with 36, and they again, they have three games in hand against the Blues, and they're only a point back from them, and they have two games in hand, and they are three points behind Minnesota. Nashville with 35 points while playing 28 games. The Jets with 31 points playing 28 games. Dallas, 28 points uh, after 26 games. They've lost four in a row. They seem to be struggling a little bit now mm-hmm. after they were they were on a good stretch reset. Didn't they win like five, six or seven in a row not I that think, long ago? I, I think it was. I think it was a lot of uh, the lines getting hot and taking advantage of the opportunities presented with weaker yeah. opponents. Yeah. Um, but they are at 28 points. And then you have the Blackhawks at 22 points and the Arizona Coyotes with 12 12 that that just looks I mean, when you look at that when you just go through all of that 39 points 37 36 35 31 go 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 12 you got to feel for arizona i mean and you look montreal at montreal has montreal has 15 that's better than 12 <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but yeah when you just look at 5 20 and 2 god I feel for you. I feel for you. So where the Avs stand in this, uh, you know, they, they, they're obviously in a good spot. Um, and, and th- I was thinking about it today and remember how, how just 
uneasy so many Avalanche fans were at the start of this season and and they they would win a game and then lose a couple and then win a couple then lose one and just the back and forth and questions were being thrown out there is this Avalanche team are they done (laughs) it was kind of ridiculous to ask that question early on you know and we had talked about it, you know, yeah. about the panic button, the proverbial panic button. And no, you're not smashing that panic button in November. Um, and and they, you know, this is a long haul. 82 games is a long haul. And you're starting to see this this team play the way that we know that they can play all along. And I was thinking about it today, thinking of now every time there's a game, now you have confidence that they can win that game. Where early in the season, you didn't have that. It's okay to have that because that's where they were at that point in time. But right now, you are you are feeling really good being an Avalanche fan, knowing that any time there is a puck drop, they have the capability to win that game. And you have that feeling that it doesn't matter who. like Especially after how we've handled New York, Florida. like It's almost like we can beat the okay teams. We can beat the average teams in the division. But when it comes to the top of the line teams, we can handle them. And when Mm -hmm. it comes to Nashville, if we end up winning this game tonight, it puts us solid in second place. And just a couple weeks ago, that was, that felt like such a, there was such a huge gap in catching Minnesota. And you are right there. And all it took was this team just, just cleaning up just a couple things. Like it was, Honestly, the passing, the mentality, and you're getting scoring from Burakovsky now. Uh, Nachushkin is a unit in the slot. Um, yep. Kale McCarr has ascended to his role. It's all these other names other than the ones that you put on posters that are delivering for the Avalanche and Darcy Kemper solidifying his role that you have this confidence in this team that this might be the team that is better than all the teams you uh relied on so heavily this might be the best iteration of the avalanche yeah and you mentioned darcy kemper and yeah i mean i still think he he is uh that guy that that is still improving Mm -hmm. and he's improving and he's playing well he's playing much better than he has all season and you know and he again you know when when you read some of the comments from the fans and stuff like that and how like they've already lost faith in him and and what happened? It, it took him to get hurt, and then you're without him for a few games, and then you see what the backup plan is. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have been so hard on Darcy Kemper. Yeah. And now, you know, he's back, and, and he is your best chance. There is no question about that. He is your best chance to win every time he's in there. So he's not going to get unseated, even though Francois is back, and we still want to see what he can do. If you can have that one-two punch, with they they have not had that, at all this season, you're good. You're in a good spot because we all like Pavel Francouz. We all have seen what he can do. The question now is it's been so long since he's done it at an NHL level. Can he keep it up? Can he keep healthy? Can he get back to that? I always reference when he took over for Grubauer after Grubauer got uh, hurt in the Air Force game that he made uh, the uh, – I don't think he was number one. I think he was the second star and then the third star mm-hmm. the two weeks following that. And I we even mentioned it not that long ago because Kale McCarr was the third star one week and then followed up by the third star the following week. And he's the only, he's only the second person in Avalanche history to be a one, two, or three star two weeks in a row. The yeah. first one to do it was Pablo Francois. I don't think yeah. anybody would get that trivia question right <laughs> Uh, if it didn't happen recently, but yeah, 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 you, 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 and they're again doing it with injuries every single day, every day. And you, and Devon, uh, Taves even said it, you know, or no, was it Taves who said it or no, Kadri said it, you know, Mm -hmm. when when we're healthy, I think it was Kadri said when we're healthy, uh, look out. He's right. I don't know if we'll ever get there just because. It's a life an avalanche fan, just living with injuries. But this team is 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 cresting right now, and it's exciting to to know that there is a game day that this team can win it. And that was one of our big complaints earlier this year was how bad the defense looked. 
Like even in a win, we were talking about, right. oh, that defense does not look good. Now the defense looks good, and you're getting right. scoring from that defense. So if you put Pavel Francouz in that position, you don't feel so bad because you know he's not going to get pelted out there. Like yeah. there were points in that Ranger game that Darcy Kemper was getting bored. I think like the Rangers had seven shots in that first period. Like if you put Pavel mm-hmm. Francouz out there, he can handle seven shots a period. <laughs> he can handle 10 shots right. a period. That's right. fine. But when, like earlier in the season, when the defense was chasing pucks and missing assignments and everybody was backing up into the blue paint, that's when you started to worry. It didn't matter who was back there. A walk had come back and you would still be worried about that right. defensive playing. Now you have more confidence in the defense and Francois can get in there. And I think it's better for him getting the feel of the game with the defense the way it's set right now. Yeah. I think the three big things that we were uh, had concerns about early in the year were goaltending, the defense, and the power play. And all three of those have improved. Yes. And that's what happens. They were, over the course of a season, good teams start to make improvements in, in categories like that, goaltending, defense, and power plays, and individually. And mm-hmm. look at what Kadri's doing. Now you're getting Burakovsky. Hopefully, you know, he's hot. Hopefully he can stay that way. You're seeing Nathan McKinnon come back and he's facilitating like normal. The goals will come. Maybe that's the next thing that needs to happen is his goal uh, scoring comes along. I think we all expect that to happen. Um, But they're settling into a very, very nice place and they have positioned themselves within the division. They didn't get too far back with all these issues that they had early on. They didn't get pushed down into the standings where they couldn't recover from it yeah they they have uh they always seem to hold their head above water and that's exactly what they did and they're sitting pretty in a division with games in hand and nobody nobody's panicking like they were uh a month a month ago a month and a half ago nobody and so. to piggyback on that nathan mckinnon point to everyone who still is worried and wondering about nathan mckinnon he is sitting at fifth and points for the avalanche right now and even with all those games he missed with the way he's playing now he is still sitting at fifth and who knows if he would have stayed healthy where he'd be sitting if he'd be up there at cadre levels like he's still producing so don't just because he's not scoring goals he's getting goals scored and yeah look at i mean he's right there it's like it's cadre miko devin taze kale mccarr and then you got nate sitting there so yeah. Don't don't lose faith in Nate. He's still there. He still produces. So yeah. that's why he is what he is. All right. Uh let's hear from Primal Origin Oils and then get into some potential Stanley Cup finals with the uh, Avalanche and some of the Eastern Conference teams that they have played already. But first, you got a beard, you get Primal You heard that right. You got a beard, get primal. If you or someone you care about has a beard, let's wave to the camera. Uh, It needs to get primal. Maybe you are that guy who's never considered the benefits of treating your beard with a product. Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients with a low impact on our planet. Primal Origin Oils makes bombs, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel and beard products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA and the combo kits make a great holiday gift. And if you're shopping for yourself, you will be glad that you did. I received the whipped butter uh, and, and that's, it's good stuff. Normally I use beard balm, uh, but they had a, a butter product available and I was like, I think I want to try that. I've heard about beard butters. And if you are in the, uh, beard p- product market, maybe you have tried one. This was the first whipped butter that I've tried and it is, it's fantastic. Believe me wow. on that. So, um, we know that every company claims to have the best, but primal origin oil challenges you to compare their ingredients with others that you have used and we promise that you will see and feel the difference. Remember the promo code of locked on will get you 20% off at primal origin oils.com. Once again, that promo code locked on for 20% off at checkout primal origin oils.com. 
All right, so the Avalanche have played a handful of games against top Eastern Conference teams. So why not just kind of go into the crystal ball and say, all right, it's the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup Finals versus fill in the blank. And we'll fill in the blanks with some of the teams that they have played uh, on the East Coast so far and how we think that might fare for them. And I know this is, you know, we're they still have a long way to go, but it's kind of fun to do this because mm. take a team like Washington, uh, one of the not only, you know, best teams in the in the Eastern Conference, one of the best teams in the league right now. And the Avalanche struggled in that game against Washington. Now, the interesting thing with Washington is they don't play them again until almost the end of the season. <laughs> I think they play them like they're like this. Let me get their schedule up. I think there's only like seven games left in the season when they play them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they play them on April 18th. So after that game, there's five games left in the season for uh, the Avalanche. So you're playing them at the very beginning of the season and you're playing them at the very end of the season. So the team that you saw or the team that the Capitals saw at the beginning of the Mm -hmm. year is not going to be the same team that they see at the the end of the year. So that could be very interesting because this is what happens when you, when you have a Stanley cup final, you always revert back to how did those two teams play against each other? And if this is the Stanley cup final, I mean, you have to ignore that first game. Yeah. And I think the second game might hold a little bit more water, but right now we can only go off that first game. And that was not a good game for the Avs. They lost six to three in that game. It was it was not a good game at all, and you hope it's one of those positions that you start off and it, you kind of figure out where you're sitting, and when it comes to the end of the season, you hope both of these teams have it locked up by then and they're in cruise control, and both games really are a wash, and yeah. you let the playoffs just kind of establish that. You hope right. everybody's locked in and clinched and really just trying to get to the playoffs healthy, and it's just kind of like a, it's a friendly match. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and then so that was that Capitals game was the first road trip game for the Avs. Mm-hmm. And that was the first of three away games. The second of those three away games was the Florida Panthers. And that was a horrible game for the Avalanche. The Capitals game was not good. It was very sloppy. They managed to score three goals. The Panthers game was awful. Pa- the Panthers were in control of that game for 60 minutes the abs had nothing and that's why we were talking about really looking forward to this more recent game against them and that one was an absolute classic that was a regular season classic and you know we we said it uh, you know just a few days ago when that game happened that would be an interesting stanley cup final that would be very exciting if you get those two teams playing that kind of hockey for seven nights this is one of those that you would you would buy a subscription to a magazine and get this on dvd and watch it forever (laughs) and ever and ever um that was incredible quality hockey and like that first matchup with florida i think that's where the itchy fingers started uh reaching towards that panic button because how bad that game was i think that was the first hints of is there something wrong with this avalanche team and mm. fast forward to that second matchup, there is nothing wrong with that Avalanche <laughs> team. <laughs> right. So, and then even the game right after that, this is the third game of that three-game road trip. Avs started it off by losing the first two. They had lost their the road or the home game against the Blues before the road trip even started. So they were on a three-game losing streak pretty much to start the season. And you had a your third straight road game to finish the road trip. In Tampa Bay, you managed to get an overtime, well, a shootout win. You managed it to, to salvage that. Um, and you you play the Lightning this weekend. So we'll see. This is kind of similar to what I'm saying with the Capitals and with the Panthers. How you, you know, you, you played horrible at the beginning of the season. Let's see what happens the second time around. Um I, I mean, and, and the Lightning, I mean, they're they're still they're lightning or the lightning. They're still yep. a solid team. They're what, 18, six and four. So you're, you're going to get a, a, a team that's still 
at the top of the standings right now in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, and this new Avalanche team, the identity they've taken on, they have a really good job at playing up to teams or playing mm-hmm. like they're they're equal. Um, they have they've had a problem playing down to teams and taking the foot off the gas. That's something that creeps up in that Tampa Bay game. Um, can, how many more nights can you be awesome in a row before it become comes crashing down? It's happened before. We've had winning yeah. streaks that come to a just a screeching halt. Um, would that be the Tampa Bay game? If you go through this looking as good as you do against Florida, you're you're knocking down every little hurdle in your way, and you're really confident going into next week and into Christmas with your family mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, I'm a fan of the Avalanche. You should be too." <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 man. And then the last uh, two teams that they face there at the top of the stands in the East. Uh, the Rangers obviously won both of their, they're done with the Rangers for the season and they won both of those games. So if those two teams were to make the Stanley Cup final, that's what everybody's going to say. The, the Rangers did not look good for the most part in both games against uh, the Avs and the Avs took both of them. And then where we were with the Panthers game going into that second game, because you didn't play that first one well against the Panthers is where we're going to be the next time they play Toronto. Yeah, because uh, Toronto swept the floor <laughs> with the Az. Easily their worst game of the season. And uh, so you're looking forward to that one. But if that's the Stanley Cup final, if, if you're if if you're up against any one of those five teams, the Leafs, the Rangers, Capitals, Lightning, and Panthers, which ones are you most most confident in? Which ones are you least confident in, knowing full well that you haven't played a second game against the Leafs? the Capitals, and yet the the Lightning, which will happen relatively soon. History already eliminates the fact that Toronto's not going to make it. Um, <laughs> uh, it okay. Because <laughs> right. you have to get through more than just like the first round to get there. Um, I got you. When it comes to being a fan, you want that Florida matchup for seven games and 85 overtimes. You never want it to end. That's on paper what you would love to sell, even though it's going to be Mm -hmm. a rough sell. Colorado and Florida are not really huge markets when it comes to selling the game. So that's that's going to be a rough sell in a Stanley Cup. But that would be a fan's dream. I worry about Tampa Bay in the Cup. Yeah, I mean, it's like once they get there... They know how to turn it on now. They've got yeah. back-to-back cups, so th- that's a championship pedigree right there. They, they know what to do to win a uh, Stanley Cup final, and if the Avs get there, that's the first time that they've been there in, in a long time, obviously. But, yeah, yeah, you got to defer to the team that's done it two times in a row at that point. And then when you see Tampa Bay in that Stanley Cup setting, they've been there, they've won it. They are a mach- an absolute machine when they are operating, how they handle the puck. They take on this whole another mindset that is just mind blowing to me how they have it set up that way. I don't know what they're doing with the LTIR situation, so we'll find out when the Stanley Cup rolls around. But yeah. how the Avalanche can handle a veteran winning dynasty. Um, well, I'm not going to throw that term out there yet. Close. But close this is it, where yeah. you would. This is where you would. And yeah. could, are the Avalanche a strong enough team? both emotionally, um, skill-wise, are they enough to stop Tampa Bay from claiming that title? That's mm. where that's what scares me. Yeah. Uh, you know, any of these teams would be, I think it would be a good Stanley Cup final, including the Rangers. And, uh, you yeah. know, we're sitting here saying that the team that the uh, Capitals are going to see in the Avalanche are gonna, is going to be a completely different team than the one that they saw at the beginning of the season. Because you played both of the games against Rangers in December, if they make it to the Stanley Cup final, you're that's going to be a different team that you're going to see. So because you played both of those games early in the season, you can kind of forget about them if, if they if it comes around where it's an Avalanche Rangers Stanley Cup final. And I think that would still be a good good Cup final. Go ahead, and you're gonna say something. When it, when you mentioned the Rangers as a potential Stanley Cup opponent, that is almost a nightmare scenario um, where you. You have that mindset. You finally get to the cup. You have all those emotions of getting there. And then you see your matchup against the Rangers. You look back at what you did in the regular season against them. And that's where the avalanche played down. 
Mm-hmm. And then you get embarrassed, almost kind of like the Vegas series last year, where you just honestly stop trying at any resistance that you get, and then you get embarrassed on the on the grand sca- uh, stage. So that matchup scares me a lot, that yeah. we would get there and then be like, okay, we know how to handle this team, and they come out completely different, lay one good hit on one hot player, and we are scrambling. Yeah. To me, man, if you're if you're forcing me to, to pick one that I think would be the biggest mountain to climb, and it's you know, it's not because it was the worst the Avalanche looked this year. It's because you know the team that they played looked so good on top of it. it it's the Maple Leafs, yeah. Uh, and it, you know that, yeah. I know Johansson was in goal, and you know, give give him Darcy Kemper, and that's going to be a different matchup. But the Avalanche looked really bad that game. But on top of that, the Maple Leafs looked really good. They they just looked like a team that knows each other and just knows what they can do and turn it on when they want to turn it on. That was a butt whooping um, against you know a, an Avalanche team that was playing pretty well at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like they were, were struggling like they were early in the year. They were starting to turn it around, and they brought the Avs back down to earth. Maybe it was a very good thing that it happened to the Avs, but. Man, that Maple Leafs team looked like a a well oiled machine. Yeah, and when you get Austin Matthews comfortable, he makes you look <laughs> foolish, it. and yeah. that's not what you want. No, nope. So uh, we'll see where it goes. I mean, they got to get through the first round. We got to get through the second round for any of that to happen. So right. uh, I know I'm not just assuming the ads are going to make the Stanley Cup final, but it's fun to kind of talk about that stuff and have some conjecture it, yeah it would be poetic for Kadri to win a cup against the maple oh, leafs oh, in an avalanche be, sweater that would be awesome love it all right everybody that's gonna do it for today thank you for making this your first listen of the day head on over to locked on nhl make that your second listen of the day and uh i, I got some power rankings going on with uh, mr adam denker over on locked on nhl if you want to listen to that uh but that'll be it hopefully the abs get a game in against the Predators. If they do, we will be talking about it tomorrow. If they don't, we'll be talking about other stuff involving the Avalanche. Who knows? So he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.